Hello ladies, gentlemen, and everybody else watching. My name's Eric, and welcome back to a brand new video here on the Bioshock Hub. Normally I don't use face cam on my videos, but I want to start incorporating it a little bit more just to make the videos or specific videos feel a little bit more personal. And that way I can show myself being a little bit more animated rather than just sitting behind a microphone like I normally do. And by the way, I hate these ads that pop up here. That's annoying. But today, as you can tell on screen and by the title of the video, we are going to be creating the definitive Bioshock character tier list. If you'd like to participate as you're watching the video, you can let me know by leaving your tier list down in the comments section below or by doing your own tier list, which I'll leave in the description for you guys to check out. Also, if you want to see more videos like this or more videos involving the face cam, let me know by leaving a comment down below, a like on the video, or subscribing to the channel, because why not? We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers, and that would help tremendously. One quick thing before we actually hop into today's video is I'd like to give a shout out to my sponsor, Advanced GG. If you want an energy drink that is absolutely amazing, that does not have any negative ingredients or anything like that for you, and actually doesn't make you crash or anything like that, they have a line that will give you just straight up hydration if you want something that's tasty. They have one for focus and they have one for energy. And they're also including more healthy stuff like probiotics as well. So if you wanna check that out for yourself or also maybe pick something up for yourself, the link will be down in the description. And if you wanna save yourself 10% off at checkout, use code TBH. It helps me out personally, and I would very, very much appreciate that. So thank you, Advanced GG, and thank you for sponsoring this video. Again, link will be down in the description. So let's do this tier list here. And again, sorry about these two ads that are on the sides. I wish they would go away. They keep popping up. At least Rocket Mortgage and all of that is getting their money's worth. So we're going to do the most important characters last, and we're going to deal with the least important characters first. So obviously with tier lists, we have S, which is top of the top, untouchable characters, the best of the best. And then we have F, which quite frankly, they just suck. So the first character we're going to actually put in that F category is Sally. Now, a lot of you might be wondering why. Her character is just annoying, at least to me personally. And it just doesn't make sense for Elizabeth to go back to Rapture for one child to save her. But it's for Jack to save her, not Elizabeth. And it's for Elizabeth to go to Rapture to start the events of Bioshock 1 before Bioshock 1 actually happens. And it's just a whole confusing mess, personally. Unless you understand Bioshock, its whole backstory, especially Bioshock Infinite, with the whole multiverse and stuff like that. So, yeah, Sally, I don't like the character overall, but that's just me. Another character we're going to put on the F side is Lady Comstock. Now, the character of Lady Comstock herself does not make any appearances in the game. Obviously, we only see her as the ghost version or just her dead body. That is legitimately probably the only time we actually see her in the game character model wise. Other than that, we just see her as a siren. So the character herself is just not important to the story overall. She's there, don't get me wrong, but she does nothing for the story, really. It's all about Comstock, Booker, uh, Elizabeth, the Lutest twins, and Fitzroy. Fink is there too, but it's mainly about those characters. The final one that I'm going to put in the F category, and I wish I didn't have to because she had a lot more to do with the game, but it could have been utilized more. 
It's Julie Langford. Now, she's extremely important to Rapture. And I mean extremely, extremely important. She's the one that provides oxygen to the whole underwater city because she created Arcadia and all of the trees and plant life. And then they just killed her off within a matter of three minutes. So it just seems like her character was so underutilized that why even have her character in the game if you were just going to kill off the trees and make Jack or just the player in general go make the Lazarus Vector? That one was a little confusing, so I'm not sure. Now let's move on to the D tier list. First and foremost, love them, but we're going to put Stanley Poole here. Now, when I say I love him, I mean Bill Lobley because he's an incredible person and an incredible friend of mine. If you want to go follow him on Twitter, I would highly recommend it. Stanley Poole is a little bit a little bit of a polarizing character. Some people like him, some people strongly dislike him, and I'm in the latter there. I dislike him. Obviously, he's the one that was responsible for turning Eleanor into a little sister and flooding Dionysus Park. I just don't like how much of a coward he is once Lamb basically says, yeah, I know what you did. So, I don't know. I felt like they could have done more with him, but then again, he does have a lot of backstory to the game itself. Next one we're going to be putting here, and even though I like the fight with Father Wales, we're going to put Father Wales here. I feel that they just threw him in as a boss fight, personally, though he treats Jack like some sort of god. And there's an audio diary that's actually entitled A Silent God, where he tries speaking to Jack, Jack doesn't respond, and he's pretty upset about it. And obviously, if you notice Siren Alley, there's a ton of references to Jack himself, as well as Bioshock 1 with the plane crash, with Dr. Steinman, etc. So obviously he has an infatuation with Jack. Unfortunately, it doesn't go much past that. So wish I could put him up higher, but it is what it is. The final character I'm going to put on the seat or sorry, the D, the D tier list is Slate and hear me out on this one too. For one, he's barely in the game. We barely know anything about him besides he was in the wars with Booker. But other than that, he doesn't add much to the story, unfortunately. And I genuinely wish he did. He's a very interesting character because obviously we know very little about him. And I feel he could have contributed more to the story, but he was there to kind of give you a moral dilemma between Booker doing the right thing and sparing him or just giving him over to Comstock and his forces. So again, they could have done a lot more there. Now that I think about it, there's one more character I'm going to put here too, and that's Grace Holloway. All she does essentially during Bioshock 2 is taunts you as Subject Delta until you save her. Then she gets mad at you for whatever reason for saving her. Then she wants to help you because she finds out that Lamb lied about Delta. So they could have utilized her a lot more. And if I'm not mistaken, there's a cut piece of content that was actually going to have Grace Holloway and Stanley Poole be in some sort of romantic relationship. I don't know if that would have been ongoing during the events of Bioshock 2 or before the events of Bioshock 2 when we find that out during an audio diary. I can't remember that one off the top of my head. So my apologies. And you know what? We're going to do one more. That being Peach Wilkins, because again, love the character, love the person behind the character. Mike Villani did a wonderful job, but it just felt like Peach Wilkins was there. All you do is go take some pictures for him, you fight him, that's it. So, and he's paranoid about Fontaine, which is understandable. So, they could have done more with him, and unfortunately, they did not. 
Now let's move on to the C tier list, which is going to occupy quite a few characters. First and foremost, we're going to put Comstock up there. Comstock was good for the role that they put him in. Obviously, they could have done a lot more with him, but he feel, he kind of felt like more of a plug and place villain. And what I mean by that is just to have an antagonist to say you have an antagonist. And no matter how many waves of enemies he threw at you, the player, it just didn't really seem like he was the main villain, which obviously, if you know Bioshock Infinite, he's you, you're him. Yeah, whole multiverse stuff. That's fun, but they could have done a lot more with Comstock. And unfortunately, it just didn't live up to what a villain should have been for the Bioshock series. It wasn't a Sophia Lamb or a Fontaine or even an Andrew Ryan, even though I wouldn't say he was the main antagonist. You know what I mean? The next one I'm going to put here is Songbird. Love the character, love the design, love the idea, hate the execution. Songbird should have been one of the bosses, if not the main boss of Bioshock Infinite. Unfortunately, we get a couple of cutscenes with them, and then he helps us at the end of the game. That's it. And again, we don't know who's inside the Songbird machine itself, though it is believed to be an alternate version of Booker, but I feel that the character itself was very, very underutilized, and it just completely missed the mark. That should have been the final boss of Infinite, not basically holding out on the Hand of the Prophet. That's just me personally. Next, again, we're going to put another of Bill Lobley's characters, that being Jeremiah Fink. Fink does a good job of making you hate him as a character. And obviously he does some really evil shit, you know, basically uses slave labor to run his business, only pays his workers in coins that are eligible to be used at Fink Manufacturing or any Fink store for that matter. So you work for him, he pays you, you pay him back. And then obviously the whole stuff with Shantytown, stealing stuff from Dr. Su Chong, and then obviously that working relationship the building and construction of Hannyman, even though he said it was for medical benefits and he wanted to help people, that was all bullshit. He was just a typical dickhead and a great dickhead at that, but they could have really elevated his character and made him one of the main villains of the game. I think he could have been one of a higher villain status than Comstock, but Again, I feel they missed the mark with Fink just a little bit. The next one we're going to put in the C category is Booker DeWitt. Now, with Booker, it's a little weird because obviously he's the main character of Infinite. We experience everything from Infinite to Burial at Sea Episode 1 and obviously Episode 2. But I felt like they held back on his character. He could have shown a lot more emotion. Obviously, you know, his job was to go there and rescue Elizabeth. But he was doing it because he is a not very good human being. He's an alcoholic, which is a disease. I wish that people who have to deal with that can get the help that they need. He was addicted to gambling. Again, I wish that, that people would get help that they need. And he sold his baby. Yeah. He, uh, he sold baby Anna. So that was a rather interesting move for a father. And I guess that's one way to put a baby up for adoption. But he does redeem himself in the end. And he takes responsibility for everything he did and will do as Comstock. So I can commend him for that, but I feel he's not on the level of Jack or Delta. And that's just a personal opinion. You could 
very drastically have a differing opinion, and that's okay. It's wonderful that people can have different opinions. So I'm going to put Booker DeWitt in the C category. The next one is going to be the final one in the C category. And that is going to be Daisy Fitzroy. The only reason why I'm putting her here is because her character had so much damn potential. And I feel like it didn't live up to the potential that she could have reached. Obviously, she led the Vox Revolution. She was the one that turned Elizabeth into the woman that she needed to be. And we learned that through Burial at Sea Episode 2, so I'm glad she was given more time in the spotlight. However, I wish we could have seen more of that Vox Revolution, because that was a huge thing in the game. It was a huge event, and Booker was a part of that. So to have maybe 10 or 15 minutes where you could have fought alongside Daisy Fitzroy, I think would have been perfect, and it would have given her a little bit more of a character. But it is one that I felt like they missed the mark just by that much with her. She should be in the B tier list, but if they would have escalated her character and elevated her character a little bit more, that's where she would have been. But again, fantastic character. Kimberly Bl uh, Brooks played her perfectly, and I just wish that she would have been more heavily involved with the game because... Obviously, with the themes of uh, Columbia and Bioshock Infinite, racism was a big part. You have her leading an anti-racism charge. That would have been perfect for me. Now, let's move on to the B section. And these are going to be all of the characters that essentially define Bioshock 1 and Bioshock 2 as the solid cast of characters and supporting characters and Infinite as well. We're going to start off with Eleanor Lamb. Now, with her, she's an extremely interesting character because obviously her mom, Sophia Lamb, is grooming her to be this sort of elated genius, an elevated genius that's going to lead Rapture into the future. And that's not necessarily what she wants. All she wants is what she knows as her father, that being Subject Delta back. And it's actually a cut piece of content that Delta is indeed her biological father through a sperm donation, or in this case, a forceful sperm donation forced by Sophia Lamb. And I want to think that's canon personally. The only time Eleanor is really usable in game is when we get the big sister suit for her, and we can obviously use the plasmid to summon her. And then she turns into an absolute badass. So Eleanor Lamb, great character. Next up, we're putting Gilbert Alexander because his backstory is absolutely tragic with what happened with him and Sophia Lamb. Then obviously with him, you know, taking the bullet and being in the tank of Adam, seeing what happens there. And genuinely, I feel bad for him as a character. And the game does a good job of making you feel bad for him. Even though he sits there and taunts you, all of the pre-recorded messages, all the audio diaries, he had a tragic backstory. And I really resonate with that. So I think Gilbert Alexander is a wonderful character. Next up, I'm going to put both Lutes twins because they are an integral part to Bioshock Infinite. They're the ones that essentially made Infinite what it is because they wanted to fix the mistake that they initially made. That being having Booker give up Anna to give to another version of Booker who turns out to be Comstock. Weird, I know, but it's this whole multiverse thing and they just wanted to undo that mistake. Hence, bring us the girl, wipe away the debt, the events of Bioshock Infinite, the ending, burial at sea, Yada, yada, yada. You get it. Both characters are done to perfection by Jennifer Hale and Oliver Vaquer, and their chemistry was incredible. Next, I'm going to put Sophia Lamb. 
because I feel she was a wonderful villain. And she grew on me after a while. I used to absolutely despise her as a villain and a character. But with her having a background in psychology, I can understand how she turned everyone human-wise against Delta and the Rapture family against Delta because she knows what she's doing. She knew how to get into people's heads. She knew how to manipulate people and get her way in terms of getting people to think how she wanted them to think. So psychologically, excellent villain. And I can't really complain. Obviously, she's a little annoying, but that's what an antagonist is. It's supposed to get under your skin. So I think she did a wonderful job with that. Next, we're going to put characters here that have minor roles in the game, whether it be small boss fights or just characters in general. So we're going to put Steinman, we're going to put Su Chong, we're going to put Tenenbaum, and we're going to put Sinclair. All these characters are absolutely wonderful. Steinman is an unhinged surgeon, and obviously we see that through the medical pavilion we see what he does inside of the medical pavilion when performing surgeries and he genuinely shows us how much adam can change a person if you just continuously splice and splice and splice so his character is wonderful su chong's just a bastard he's brilliant but he did not care about anything besides science and getting paid so I do think he had a fitting end when he tried to get the big daddies and little sisters to imprint on each other. It just took him basically pimp slapping a little sister in order to do so. And we see that in Burial at Sea episode two and the aftermath in the original Bioshock. Tenenbaum, again, brilliant mind with a very troubled past. She survived a lot. She survived a concentration camp during World War II because she would actually prove the doctors wrong and she would know more about what the doctors were trying to do than the actual doctors, giving her the nickname Das Wunderkind. And excuse my German, I don't speak it fluently, so if I said it wrong, I apologize. But she is a redeeming character because once she sees what actually happens to the little sisters, her maternal instinct kicks in and she wants to save them all, which she has Jack do during Bioshock. Or you can obviously harvest them, but she wants you to save them. So I can commend her for having that redemption arc. And then Sinclair, rest in peace, Doug Boyd, you wonderful human, was a wonderful character. He had that southern charm. And during the entirety of Bioshock 2, up until he was turned into Subject Omega, I believe, you always had that thought in the back of your head that he was going to turn on you like Atlas. So I think that's what they were going for. They wanted you to doubt Sinclair all the way up until the end. But Sinclair wanted to help you. He didn't want to stab you in the back. So Doug Boyd, your family, I wish nothing but the best and rest in peace my friend now let's go to the a category so we're going to start off first and foremost with frank fontaine frank fontaine was a genius in terms of being a con man and getting the way or his way and what he wanted obviously i think atlas is the better character you'll see here in a second but everything he did in order to get Jack back to Rapture with Tenenbaum and Su Chong was perfect. The mind control, would you kindly, code yellow, it was all done perfectly. And the twist revealing Atlas as Frank Fontaine was beautiful. So you can't ask for anything better than that. Next, we're going to put the two main characters, that being Jack and Subject Delta. The two silent protagonists added a lot more to the game than I originally thought, because they actually allow you to experience everything that's going on without them interrupting you by speaking. So you could 
basically experience the story at your own pace. If you wanted to deal with the main storyline, you could do that. You could listen to everything. You could listen to all the cutscenes and all of that. But if you wanted to explore, find all the audio diaries and listen to them and piece together other people's stories, you could do that without anybody butting in. So wonderful characters, Jack, the deadly silent protagonist and the super toddler. And then we have subject Delta father of Eleanor lamb and overall badass big daddy. What more could you want? Next, we have my favorite character, and T. Ryder Smith did a wonderful job with him, Sander Cohen. Sander Cohen is that unhinged artist who still thinks he has it when you meet him in Fort Frolic, but you realize just how insane he is by him encasing people and splicers within plaster, all of just the messed up art projects that he does and then obviously the short temper and again it just shows if you splice and splice and splice how insane you can actually go his character is definitely one of the most memorable in bioshock as well as the level you meet him fort frolic is one of the most memorable and then finally we're gonna put elizabeth here now this one is probably going to be the most polarizing. Uh, either you're going to hate it or you're going to understand why I put her here. Everything Bioshock Infinite leads up to is about her. And obviously she is the one that was responsible for the events of Bioshock, the original. The only thing I don't care about, and it doesn't even necessarily involve her, I felt that those events were forced in Burial at Sea Episode 2. They could have done it where it felt more naturally, but to me it just felt a little forced. And with Courtney Draper, she did an excellent job as Elizabeth. She actually did a perfect job as Elizabeth. And going back, I don't think anybody else could have been casted as Elizabeth. Whereas for Booker DeWitt, I felt they could have gotten another voice actor instead of Troy Baker. And that's not a knock on Troy Baker. I just feel that Booker DeWitt was a character that could have been voiced by any voice actor and it still would have worked. But with Elizabeth and Courtney Draper, I can't think of anybody that would have been casted that would have been better in my personal opinion. Now the final two are the two that I think define Bioshock 1, obviously, besides Big Daddies and Little Sisters. That being Andrew Ryan, creator of Rapture, and Atlas, the one who wants to take down Andrew Ryan. These two give you everything you want in Bioshock. The Civil War, the continuation after with the fighting between Atlas and Andrew Ryan, and then Atlas being this cheery Irishman that wants to help you navigate Rapture, but ultimately has the plan of having you kill Andrew Ryan, who ends up being your father, the father of Jack Ryan, wants you to kill him, gets the key card and the access to Rapture, the reveal from Atlas to Fontaine, everything about these two characters was perfect. Armin Shimmerman and Carl Hanover played these characters perfectly. And again, just like with Elizabeth, I do not see anybody else that could have played these two characters personally. So here's my list. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Again, I understand if some of you disagree with it, that's totally okay. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. And I just want to hear who you would put in what section of the tier list. So if you want to do that, let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more like this, would you kindly hit that like button, hit the bell and turn on all post notifications, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already, or if you come back to the videos and watch them on the regular and aren't subscribed, why not? You're already coming back on the regular and it would help out a tremendous amount. If you want to talk to me outside of YouTube or in social media in general, 
My social medias and my Discord server will be linked down in the description below if you guys are interested. Also, I'm streaming more on Twitch.tv later at night. So if you want to check that out and go follow me over there, that'll be in the description as well. Finally, again, thank you to Advanced GG for sponsoring this video. If you want to check them out, that link will be in the description as well. And be sure to use code TBH at checkout to save yourself 10% off your order. And finally, a couple of videos will be popping up on the screen if you want to check those out for yourself. I would greatly appreciate that. With that being said, thank you all so very much for watching. Take care, stay safe, and I will talk to you all in the next video. Bye, guys.